Hello, D. Alfred Ostrowski here. And in this recording, I'm going to be covering an overview of NFAs and DFAs in the context of representing regular languages. And we're going to perform a conversion, very simplified, from an NFA to a DFA. So we have an NFA and DFA. This stands for non-deterministic and deterministic finite automaton. I can have a simplified NFA and I can represent it as such. Let's consider I have a language and my language is only considering a simplified alphabet of a alphabet of a single letter A. I can define an automaton where I can have the following states defined, where I can have three A's that take me to a final state. And this language in and of itself, this being a not a final state, just the third right here. This existing as concerning what's in my language and not in my language is only a single word of three A's. I can expand on the language. Now this by itself is a DFA. Why? Because the primary distinction between an NFA and a DFA is that with a DFA for each input letter, I only have one and only one output from each state. With an NFA, I can have more than one and I can also have a lambda transition a transition from one state to another without any input. Making those two states equivalent if you're in the state that has a lambda transition out of it. So I can expand on my language. And in this case, I can have two A's going to final state and I can loop back to that state. So that is going to expand my repertoire. It's going to except the word of two A's and any additional two A's beyond that. So it's one, two, three, four, four A's and keep on looping back. So it can do six, eight, 12, because I can go A, A, two A's, a third A and a fourth A, a fifth and a sixth A. So this language, represents the union properties that are closed under regular expressions or regular languages, where I can consider this as the language of e to the three in a union with a two, not two to the nth, but two n or two times any number of a greater than or equal to zero. And this is known as an NFA or non-deterministic finite automaton. Deterministic automaton is one, again, that I only can have a single output on each letter from that state. And so if I'm asked to cons convert this from an NFA to a DFA, I can freehand it. Okay, I can look at this and say, well, knowing what I know, I can, and the experience that I have, I can create a DFA that expresses this same language. I can have the three transitions from a start state to a final state. And I can make the second state, a final state as well, that would accept this additional word. And then I can also extend that even further to go from, go to an additional state and then make that a final state that'll be 
this being my start. One, two, three, four A's, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and so forth. So this is a DFA. Why? It's the difference because in every state I have a single output on each transition. In the NFA, on that first state, I had a transition. Okay. So I can freehand this because this is a very simplified expression. However, in many cases, especially if I have an alphabet with several letters, this may not be as straightforward a task. So there is a means of automating this by going through a set process to convert from NFA to DFA. And going through both the manual process and the process of following through the algorithm. One of the greater learnings here or appreciations is to understand that finite automatons are used to recognize regular languages. If I can use a finite automaton, whether it is an NFA or DFA, then I essentially am proving that it is a regular language. And if I have an NFA and I can convert it to a DFA every single time through a set algorithm, then I'm demonstrating that the set of classes between an NFA and a DFA are equivalent. So your power of expression between an NFA and a DFA are exactly the same. But there are primary distinctions. And one of the, as hopefully illustrated even by the simplified example of the properties of the union being easily represented by an NFA, that in more complicated scenarios, it is much easier to immediately write an NFA and then perhaps go through an algorithmic transition from NFA to DFA. So let me clear this screen. I'm going to go through a set process. And while this is very, a very simplified example, I'm doing it for two reasons. So when we get to examples that are more complicated, it is easier to do this type of example. And it's also a good way to check, say if you want to freehand, just writing a DFA, and maybe perhaps you're not sure that you've expressed exactly the same language. You can go through the process, and if you get to the same answer through two different processes, then you have a lot more confidence in your answer, most definitely. So let me rewrite the NFA again, and we're going to do the conversion from the starting point. So I'm going to have an NFA once again with the three states to a final state. And then the other transition, since this is an NFA, that will take me to a final state and also allow the means to loop back to the prior, which gives me every even combination. I would need two A's and I'll get two, four, six, eight, and so forth, number of A's. So let's convert this through different means from NFA to DFA, and how do I do that? Well, I have a set process, and the process works where I should first initially uh, number these states. I'm gonna go one through four, five, and six for the two bottom states. And for each state on my input, I'm going to mar mark all of the states that I can transition in that given character. And this is very simplified because I only have a single letter in my alphabet, again, I'm only working with variations of single letter A. So on state one, if I have a transition to A, it's going to go to both two and, I'm sorry, this was four, so this is five and six, not to confuse that. So I'm going to go to state two, I'm also gonna to go to state five. So I'm gonna mark it as such. On state two, I'm gonna to go to state three as I see here. And on state three, I'm going to go to state four on a transition of eight. Now four, if I want to uh, I can transition out to a dead state, 
but that's really implied. So in most cases, I may not necessarily have to represent that. However, with the DFA, you may see a lot of representations where they go through uh, a more complete representation, but it is implied that if I have any A's, if this was my only means of accepting to a final state, if I transition out of that with an additional A, because that, that solution in and of itself was a single, single word of triple A. So if I had four A's and I only consider this as my entire finite automaton, then or three A's, then four A's would not be accepted. However, they are accepted down here. So I can mark four and this really doesn't have any state to be considered on the transition out because it's going to be going to a dead state. So I can either draw it in, I'll just be a completionist. I will draw it in and just draw a, a, a straight line, noting that I address that state. So now I go to state five and on an A, I'm going to transition to a state six. And then on state six, I'm going to transition to a state five. So the issue now is I'm going to ask myself, am I, have I completely resolved my situation here? The algorithm says I have to take any new states here. I created a new state. I'm going to identify that and note, note any transitions. And Kate, in this case, my new state is called 2.5. And this is going to be identified as all the transitions, both from state 2 in addition to all the transitions from state five. So on state two, I'm gonna to go to a three. And on state five, I'm going to go to six. So I asked myself the question at this point, have all new states been addressed? Well, I just created a new state, so I can't, I have to continue on with my, uh, with my solution. So I'm gonna continue it up here. So I'm gonna look at three, six. I'm gonna ask myself the same question on the transition of three. I would go to obviously to a four. And on a state six, I'm going to transition to a state five. I've also created another state in this process. So I'm gonna add this. I'm gonna keep on going until I run out of new states that are that are being created. So on four five, I'm gonna ask that question, where does four go? It doesn't go anywhere. On a five, it will go to state six, right? So I'll mark it as that. So six is an existing state. I address that down here. So now I'm complete. Now I can, I have all the transitions in my states to identify a brand new finite automaton and deterministic finite automaton. Okay, so here I'm going to say, okay, one uh, state one on the transition A goes to this new state called, in this case, two five. And I also have a state down here that's going to transition on A to state 3 as before. 3 will transition on a state A to 4 as well. And 4 doesn't go anywhere, so don't consider that. Next, I have a state 5, and that transitions on an A to state 6. So now I have 2, 5, and that transitions to state 3, 6. So I'm going to create a new state, and I'm going to identify that as such. 3, 6 uh, also makes a transition to a new state called 4, 5. And 4, 5 makes a transition to state 6. And what I also didn't note here is state makes a transition to state 5. So here's my completed representation. I'm going to thrift a few things out here. One thing to consider is my only start state was one, and one is not in any of my newly created states. So anything that isn't from the start state with the two, three, four, this is not to be considered why, because there's no way to get to this because there's no starting state or any state that points to that. So we can omit that. And what do we have when we look at this? Well, this is exactly, if I look at the, 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 the state with the six, six is in and make those final states, I have exactly the same solution that I freehanded prior. So I was able to check that and we can go through this again, right? If I look at what's in my language and not, I have the two A's, I have the uh, uh, four A's, one, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So six, eight, ten, so forth. What would not be in this language is, let's say, for example, would be five A's or let's say seven A's. So when we look at these solutions, we always want to consider what's in my language and what is not considered my language. So what did we accomplish here? We derived a definition of an NFA through just a state flow diagram. And we consider it as such as it could actually represent the union of two regular languages. I freehanded a solution to a DFA, and then we went through a formalized process that is more advantageous to more complicated problems. However, it is nice to have a small demonstrative example to get down the basic mechanics of how to do the conversion from an NFA to a DFA. And one thing to keep in mind, is that when I convert to a DFA, it may not be the exact same DFA. It may not be a minimized DFA, in which case we have to go through a DFA minimization algorithm. And that is yet another uh, solution that we'll look at uh, beyond this. But we arrived at the same solution, and now we have the basic mechanics of how to convert NFA to DFA. And this is a nice way to check ourselves against any type of freehand drawing of a DFA because the NFA is a simpler solution. The, the disadvantage of the NFA being non-deterministic, it is presents a very inefficient representation. So the DFA represents efficiency. However, key point here is NFA and DFA, though uh, some of these NFA definitions may not uh, directly um, be translatable to DFA, um, what may be implied by other representations or tutorials. Uh, these two uh, represent the same exact regular language, category of regular languages. So that is to be appreciated. We just demonstrated that through this process. So hope this helps and thanks for listening. Thank you.